Hello, Andre W. And another update on the drill. And I've painted all the parts, so we'll just see what colour they are now. And also have a look at the electric motor. At least to uh, check it does work and it's not going to blow up and kill anybody. Now, of course, we did see that the motor actually turned on, so uh, we kind of know it works already, but we'll uh, just see what it sounds like without the rest of the drill attached. And also do a couple of tests on that, just to make sure that uh, it's not going to short out and set on fire. Now here are some of the parts of the drill, that's the sort of main head casting there, the mounting plate for the motor and the front cover and a little bracket and a small plate that goes on the motor. And as you can see they're now metallic pink, so much better than that non-colour at all because I suppose they didn't even have any paint on them, they uh, paint had all disappeared. There was a bit of black left on the motor but that was pretty much gone anyhow. So those are all painted up there, they're just uh, sitting there, didn't uh, clean the top of that yet. We'll, uh, polish that up later maybe. Now here on the floor we've got the base plate, the column and also the table. i basically put these back together already. Painted in the same pink here and you can see the table now does tilt and rotate properly as the uh, thing at the back was all seized up and completely corroded so I've cleaned all that off. And there is a locking pin here which just basically goes in to secure the table in one of three positions though. Only one is actually much good, it's basically horizontal like that, and then the others are vertical and then vertical in the other direction, and the pin just goes through there. That's one that would lock it in the horizontal, and then there's one up here and one down there for the other two. So that's done there. Back I've painted in a satin black, mainly because there wasn't actually much pink paint because I only got one can, and of course black is much cheaper anyway and nobody's going to see it there anyhow. In the base the same, and the same pink there at the back. Column again cleaned up pretty well there at the bottom, and the rest of it's uh, at least steel coloured now. It's not perfect, but uh, it's bearing out it's 60 plus years old, so it's certainly good enough anyhow. And the base I've painted the bottom, or the underside, in the satin black as well, so that's all completely covered. Here's most of the other small components in here. I've cleaned off a reasonable amount of the rust, but obviously a bit more cleaning up is required. This uh, shiny one here is actually a replacement, as the uh, one it came with, the threads had been basically damaged at the end, so someone had grunted it down much too tightly and the threads were actually damaged, so you couldn't actually get the nut on much further, so just got a replacement of those. Most of the others look okay, but we may need to change one or two of those. We'll see when we get to assembling the top half. So uh, that's pretty much there, that's just sort of uh, rusting away in a puddle of oil there at the moment. Now we know the motor works because we saw it working in the original video, so obviously it's not completely ruined, but we'll do a couple of basic checks on it anyhow just to uh, see what kind of state it may be in. I've put a new bit of wire here, this is just temporary bit of old flex which, uh, for testing purposes. Put an actual uh, gland here, so it didn't even have one, just a big gaping hole. And in terms of the wiring, nothing really too surprising. It's a single phase motor. So all we've got is basically line neutral and then earth goes to the metal case and that's pretty much it. There's only the three wires there and line and neutral. It doesn't actually matter which way around they go either because it's AC so either one will do. These are not actually marked but uh, we've just put it back the way it was actually done previously. I say it doesn't matter, it doesn't uh, go in the wrong direction or anything. So AC is of course changing direction all the time anyway. So uh, we'll just do a couple of checks here, and the first one we're going to do is to make sure that this wire here, which is the earth, is actually connected to the metal case of the motor, because if it wasn't then the next test is going to be fairly meaningless. So uh, we'll just use the meter here. Now we should really zero out these leads to account for the resistance of them, although in this case it's not particularly relevant, we just want to make sure yes, connected or not. So we'll uh, clip these together, and when you actually zero the leads it's important to put these the right way round. Obviously there's a fixed piece and a moving piece, and you want the two fixed pieces to go together like that. If you do it the other way around, like that, then you're basically measuring not only the lead, you're also measuring through the spring in the hinge there. So uh, you want the two pieces like that, because if you do them like that you're not actually measuring on the correct side. So uh, zero them on the fixed jaw side, and we'll just press the uh, zero button there. That 22 is basically the resistance of the leads, or 0.22. And then we can clip onto here, and it doesn't matter too much about the spring there because of course it's going to be clamped between both sides, so that's fine. So we'll do that, and then we can just clip onto the actual pulley there, that will do. 
So, uh, yeah, that's fine. So 0.02 ohm, so pretty much essentially zero, which is kind of what you expect because we're only measuring this short bit of wire and the massive metal casing of the motor. So that's fine. Now the next thing we can do is just check continuity between the line and the neutral just to make sure they are in fact connected. So let's go between those two. If this shows as open circuit then it means the motor is either completely bust and it's burned away or we've got some kind of busted connection. What we should see is a fairly low resistance but certainly not zero. So uh, there we go, getting about four ohms on that. And uh, again that's fine because uh, we're either looking for a value. What the actual value is isn't hugely important. But say if we've got short circuit it means that one of these is shorted to the case so when you turn it on there's a big bang. And if it was open the circuit then it's not going to work at all because either there's a busted connection or maybe the uh, winding to have burnt away or something equally as bad. So that's fine. And then the next thing we'll do is just check between the casing and we can actually twist these two together here. We could just test onto one because we know it's only four ohms but we'll just go between the two. And we'll use the insulation resistance here. And we're going to use a test voltage here of 500 shows up very well on there but basically 500 volts at the bottom you can cycle through different values if needed and 500 in this case this is a 240 volt motor so generally want to pick the voltage that's uh, around double the normal operating voltage so 240 we're going to use 500 if it was a three phase motor at say 400 and something volts then we'd use the thousand volt setting instead now for this one we should see a higher value as possible many mega ohms and preferably in the many hundreds but uh, whether we get that on this is another story. So we'll just uh, press the button and see what we get. Okay, so we're getting about sort of 18, 19 there. You'll see it's actually slowly increasing there. So, uh, what, 20 or so. So uh, 20 mega ohms, I mean, that's not uh, completely perfect and wonderful, but it's certainly an easy pass, generally looking for values of at least one mega ohm. So uh, 21 or so there, and that's perfectly acceptable. Now that might be due just to a bit of moisture or something inside because we don't know where this has been stored for many years or whatever so uh, it may well improve once it's been run up and uh, heated up to temperature but uh, nevertheless 21 mega ohms that's absolutely fine and we can do both there if we did just one it would actually give us pretty much the same result because although we've got a resistance between them bang around that's four ohms this is 21 million ohms so four ohms in the scheme of 21 million is pretty much irrelevant so if we just did the neutral there we should get a pretty similar result once again. Yeah, it starts around that 15 and then slowly increases up to uh, around the 20 mark there. So uh, again, pretty much the same. So I'll just use this power meter here. This is one of these plug-in type of things. So uh, just put it on there. I'm not going to use the overload trip whatever because obviously we're here with it. So if it blows up, we can just wrench the plug out or turn the power off back there. And uh, I'm going to use this connection block here. And this has been in other videos. It's made by Cliff. It's a quick test and uh, details in the description of the video if you want to actually buy one. But uh, essentially you just put your bare wires in there. Terminals go into there and make the circuit. So uh, a reasonably safe way without having to put plugs and things on. And all of that. So I'll just arrange this so we can actually see it on the camera. And then hopefully we can see the sort of current and whatever that this thing is actually going to use. So I'll switch it on in a moment and we should be able to then see the voltage, also the amps and the VA as well and the watts and also the power factor. Power factor is going to be fairly poor as uh, small motors usually are. And I've also got this thing here which is a uh, digital tachometer. I've put a little bit of the uh, effective tape here so hopefully we'll be able to get some idea of the rotational speed of this device because again we have no idea whatsoever. Now it's going to be fairly loud because motors generally are. This one uh, certainly is no exception. So I'll uh, just switch it on and we'll just go through the readings on the display.
Now I did manage to get the speed with this, it came up to around 1490 RPM according to this thing. Now these are not uh, mega accurate but uh, 1490 is in the right sort of realm for what you would expect for this type of motor. And uh, you may have heard when it spun down there, there was that rattling bit. It appears this is the type of motor which has a twin winding, so you've got the main winding for running. And then there's another winding in there which is only switched in when it's in the idle state. That's basically used to get it started. And then when it goes to a certain speed, the switch inside will disconnect that winding. And when it's slowed down, that is the uh, switch most likely clattering a bit as it uh, goes back into the closed position. And there's a bit of a whine there, but it tends to come and go, so not entirely clear whether it's the bearings or whether it's just some of the parts, say that uh, centrifugal switch in there or something, maybe causing that. So I'll just uh, turn it on briefly again, we can just uh, hear that sort of rundown sound again. So we get to that sort of stage. switch clicking back and then it just stops at the uh, end of that. So not necessarily in the best of condition but uh, nevertheless it does seem to work. Now in theory we could take this apart and uh, maybe even change the bearings or whatever else but uh, that's a fairly involved load of bother so uh, I'm not particularly inclined to do that at the moment. So for now I think we'll just clean up the end of this and also the one on the other thing as well and then uh, just stick it back on the drill and see how it works on the drill itself. If at some later date it decides to uh, not work very well or makes an even worse noise then I could uh, take it apart. But uh, unfortunately taking apart involves taking off both ends and then taking the whole middle out and whether these come off or not due to centuries of rust is another matter. And of course now I've painted over them as well so that's going to make it even more difficult. And of course you can also just buy new motors of this sort of size for about £70 anyway so have to judge whether it's really worthwhile taking about some 60 year old piece of equipment in the hope of fixing it when you can just go to the shop and just buy a new motor and stick the pulley on there. Now that's pretty much it for this video and the next one may be a couple of weeks away because uh, waiting for a few parts to arrive one of which is a spring for the quill return as there was no actual spring in there for inexplicable reasons so presumably someone broke it and then took the old spring away and didn't bother to put another one in. It's coming from China because it was only five dollars compared to about 20 plus if you buy it in the UK. So that may be a while. Also need to get a new belt. That's a standard A section belt so no problem with that. I can buy that pretty much anywhere, just a couple of pounds. And uh, some of the actual bolts and other fixings may need to be replaced. I've got them all in that tray as we saw earlier. I've already bought a new one for the fixing the head casting onto the column because the one that had so the actual threads had been damaged, so clearly you couldn't reuse that one. But again, they're fairly generic things. You can buy those pretty much anywhere. Now, there will be pictures of this and maybe other stuff on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. So links to those are in the description. JW Flame on all three of those. And you can also support this channel on Patreon if you want to. And it's JW Flame there as well. But until next time, thanks for watching.